Here we have the breadboard view of my e circuit. We have the Arduino 101 board right here and the breadboard down below. All these purple wires are the PWMs that I use to control the board. And the cyan wires are the normal digital outputs from the board using the pins. Down here, we have a red wire to connect to the breadboard for the 3.3 voltage, a blue wire for the 5 volts, and black for the ground. Over here at the LCD screen, we have the ground connections, the, vo the normal voltage connections, and all the pin connections. And we have this yellow wire leading to this potentiometer hooked up to the 3.3 volts and ground. We are us using the variable from the potentiometer to change the brightness of the screen. Over here is the servo, getting voltage from 5 volts pin, grounding, and we're also getting the PWM reading from pin 6. Over here is the shift register, where we have two voltages going in, two grounds. We are using a PWM and two digital pins. This is the shift register, and we're using five of the shift register's outputs. Down here, we have it grounding to a 100 ohm resistor going all the way back to the breadboard. Right now, we have the schematic view of our circuit. We have the Arduino 101 board up here. We have a red wire displaying the 3.3 volts going to the LCD screen and the shift register. And we have a ground and this black wire connecting to all of them. We have of the same color wires for the PWMs and the digi normal digital pins from the Arduino board. This is the potentiometer that, which connects to the LCD screen. Over here on the shift register, we have all five LEDs connected to the ground through the resistor. And on this LCD screen, we have the same wiring, all the grounds, same pins, and over here we have the servo, which is getting voltage from the 5 volts and gets grounded through everything else. This is the code for my a hat project. Here we are including the LCD library. We are setting the pins used for the LCD screen. We are including servo library. We are naming that servo as servo1, then we are adding the Bluetooth library. We then give up Bluetooth a peripheral and service values. Continue down here. We are creating three variables for controlling the shift register. And we are creating another variable here for data. We then create a switch characteristic for our Bluetooth down here. Down in the setup loop, we are attaching the servo to pin 6. These next three lines here set the pins for the shift register to outputs. We then down here set the size of our LCD screen and then we clear it for anything that was left on for previous runs. We then set a name for our Bluetooth and advertise thing. We then go to add an attribute, we give it a service and characteristic, and we default its value to 255. 255 is one of many values you can, it can be set to. 255 has the uh, main use that will be explained when we get to it later. We then sit, turn on the Bluetooth down further. We are these next two loops will be for controlling the a shift register. Here we, we use shift right. We create bit right, shift out, and we set a latch pin high and low to create it, what we need for uh, later. In LED control, we create two variables, 
one called index, one called delay time. Delay time is what it is. Index is going to be set to a value at random 5. And then we have a shift right index plus 2 high. Pause. Off. We have plus 2 because the, those are the, the pins in the shift register I used from 2 to 6. Down further, we are in the main part of the program. Here, we are setting it central, so we're listening for something to connect. And we're just going to be in going into this loop, and so if, if it's central, so while connect central is connected, so this part here sets it so that if, we, if someone is hooked up to the Arduino, it will go into this loop and stay till someone leaves. We start with LED control, so the all the LEDs will turn on when someone is connected. Easy way to determine that. And now we have an if statement for if the switch characteristic is written, which means there is a value to it. We will then go into these if statements and else ifs later on for or what each switch characteristic value number goes to. This one, while value is zero, we will do LCD print zero, and we will set the value back to 255. Saying it to 255 ensures that this does not repeat the loop and just keep printing zero over and over again. And here is an else if where we use one instead. We replace the value here with one, and it goes back to five. This repeats for numbers. Then we do a few symbols. Here we have the alphabet in capital letters. We go down. We'll go to where I have a few more symbols or punctuation. Then we'll go into the alphabet lowercase. We continue down. We will reach even more symbols for our use for typing everything individually. Now here is where it gets a bit more complex. We have else ifs. I start mine at 90 for or displaying default lines. So I do an LCD clear, which doesn't only just clear the screen, it defaults the position of the cursor back to the starting point. It, we then have it print hello, and then we have it, it go back to 255. For the more complex ones that don't fit in just one line, like this one, we will do a clear we will print the top line. We will then set the cursor down in one line. And then we will have it, it print the second line. And then we have it go back to 255. We can have more than 100 of these default added it in for the code setup I have. I only put in a few for example and when we go down here I added in two values where we have if we put in 108 we can have it set the servo to one position and if we do 109 instead we will set it to the opposite position that's how I control the servo just setting doing these two numbers and then I have down here three more special else this this one 253 is gonna be my copyright kind of setup print written by cursor down print Kevin Nolan set 255 
here we have 254, which will be just an LCD clear. So it'll just clear the screen, then go back to 255. So if you're typing individual text, you can clear it and then start typing more individual text again. This is the probably the more important loop I have. Else if 255, it is do nothing. This is where the characteristic sits, where nothing will happen. So every time we print something, if it didn't go to this loop, it would be constantly printing whatever loop it was. So this loop is set up so that it can default to a position that is guaranteed nothing will, will go wrong. 